the power of planning and change. The power of planning and change. Millions of people are going to be watching this session. They live in countries like all of us with its own challenges. And I want to take you through the introduction of this year. A new year is an opportunity for all of us to look at life from a fresh perspective. I want to connect with what some of those perspectives are. First of all, a new year allows you to redefine your priorities. What are the important things in your life? Secondly, a new year allows you to define or redefine your purpose. What is your purpose for living? Thirdly, it allows you to take another look at your vision for your life. Your personal vision, your family vision, maybe the vision for your company, your organization, or your department, and hopefully the national vision of your country. Also, a new year gives you an opportunity to reset your goals. Sometimes our goals that were not met in the past needs to be refocused and maybe even renewed. And some goals may need to be canceled because they're not relevant anymore. A new year also allows you to forget some things that didn't work or things you cannot change. We call it your past. A new year also allows you to plan a new future. I want to talk for a few minutes about entering this new year, which is 2013. I am always concerned about understanding. In all you're getting, get understanding. So most of my life, I keep asking God about understanding. And I wanted to understand the significance of this year. And so I did some research, and as I told you on the first day of this year, that God is a God of numbers. Numerology is a scriptural component. Every word and every letter in Hebrew has a number attached to it. The number 13 <clears throat> is attached to some letters in Hebrew that we need to take note of. And I can show you many scriptures, which I will be here next week, please, where the, God focuses on the number 13. And many people have, from the other kingdom use 13 as a negative word, a negative letter. Uh, uh, they call it an unlucky number. But if you read scripture... The number 13 was always attached to the fulfillment of a promise. But what does the number, when you convert it from Hebrew in scripture, means to us? First of all, it means change. It means change. You remember that 12 in our discussion, in our last series, 12 meant what? Completion. Remember? So when you read the number 12 in the Bible, it's always related to completion. I'll give you a few examples. Jesus only chose 12 disciples. That means it was a complete set. But remember, he had to be automatically number 13 in the group, which I'll talk about later on. Around the throne, there are 24 elders. But it says 12 on each side. It's a picture of perfection before God. There are 12 gates to the city. Which represents perfect control. What comes in, 
What goes out is controlled by 12. 12 means complete. It means closed. It means finished. So 13 is after completion, which means you complete something, and now you're starting something new. That's why it's called change. So 13 then has the spiritual connotation of starting afresh. Isn't that good news? It also means a new phase. Now this one is very important when you look at the power of this Hebrew concept. New phase means not just to change your clothes, but to change the style of your clothes. New phase doesn't mean to change the location of your furniture in the house. But it means to bring in completely new furniture and colors on the wall. 13 means that there is a complete change. The phase of your life. Some of you have experienced it already the last few months. Where your life took this crazy turn. You're trying to figure out what happened. You, your business failed, you know, your marriage got messed up, your, the kids do dumb things. You're like, what? And then you say, what am I going to do now? It's a phase. 13 also means in scripture, new dimensions. You would experience things you never did before. Can I prophesy just a couple of people in my Holy Ghost spirit here? Some of you are going to go to places you ain't never been. New dimension means you see things that you never saw before. You hear things you never heard before. You meet people who you never thought you would be in their class to meet. This shall happen. 13 also means starting again. What a blessing to walk into a place where you can say it didn't work last year. So I'm not going to forget about it. I'm just going to start again this time let me tell you what i mean by that uh, moses tried to set the children of israel free by himself you remember that he picked up a piece of wood and he swung it at one of the egyptians and they died and moses became a fugitive why it wasn't time yet 40 years later god came to the same man in the desert and said, do you want to do what you tried to do 40 years ago? Of course, he argued because he was a fugitive. And God said, no, if, if, if you go back this time. Everybody said this time. Oh, I felt that one. If you go, see, if, if you're off time, doesn't mean that your company ain't going to work. Sometimes your phase over on a job. Sometimes your phase is over in a relationship. But God says, when the right time comes, you will use the same piece of wood against the same situation, but this time, the Lord is on the wood. And he is in the situation. And you're going to set the people free. Moses' timing was perfect 40 years later. Can I just say that somebody's 40 years has arrived in 2013? Some of you will get that after I'm gone. Hey boys, they're starting again. Tell your neighbor, start it again. Come on, say the feeling. Start it again. Tell them whatever stopped. Start it again. And tell them this time. It's 13. Give God a hand. This is where God's going to make some changes. The word that translates the number 13 also means to renew something. Renewal. It also implies, and this is the important one, transformation. 13. Transformation. This is probably why the world consider the number 13 as being unlucky. Because we don't want nothing to change. So we think it's negative. But God is telling us he's about to transform everything that you thought was set. And that's why you're going to have to study planning this year. You're going to have to plan everything you want God to change. Very important. This word 13 also means in Hebrew unity. Uh, when I studied, the, did some research on this, 
the, the, the Hebrews have a strange concept of God. Matter of fact, they're afraid to even call his name. And the concept they have is God is one. But the number 13 in Hebrew actually means three in one. That's why they line it up. Three and one. So one and three in Hebrew means unity. We call it triunity or trinity. So 13 is the year when God himself is going to interfere in your affairs. He ain't going to send no angel this year. Oh dear. The Trinity itself is coming into your business. The unity is going to attract the Trinity. Write that down please. When you unify with someone else this year, the Trinity is going to get involved in your activity. So agreement is going to be important in this next phase of your life. Having people to agree with you. When two walk together and agree, God says, I will be in the midst. I ain't going to send no angel. I'm going to be there myself. So it's important to protect yourself against contention, bitterness, anger, having malice and deceit with people. You got to keep your heart pure this year. You got to make sure that you are always in fellowship because that's going to attract the presence of Jehovah himself. I'm telling you, God is going to do something powerful this year. Unity. This word also implies closing of a chapter and the opening of a new one. This is good news for most people. If you were broke last year, tell your neighbor, new chapter. If you couldn't find a job last year, tell your neighbor, new chapter. If somebody divorced you, tell your neighbor, new chapter. If somebody break your heart and didn't want to in, be engaged you no more, tell them, new chapter. If somebody left you because they didn't know how good you was, say, no, new chapter. Clap, clap, clap right there. That's a good piece of clap. If you've been tired of being unmarried, God told me to tell you it's a new chapter. You all better smile now. This is serious business I'm talking about. Uh, God is going to open up a new chapter this year. 13. It's a powerful number. It's a powerful number. And so when we look at 13, it means complete change. Complete change. Now this is exciting but also threatening. Because no one loves change you pray for it and hate it when it comes so we got to talk about change a little bit because it's inevitable now it doesn't matter it's going to happen this year change happens all the time but this year is going to be drastic changes big ones massive ones ones that you never thought was going to happen you'll remember this session in a few months because this is the year that God's going to going to upset the cart. Huh? So in this new experience, I want to make a declaration in this ministry to all of those watching me worldwide. 2013 is now declared the year of change and new beginnings. Do you receive that? Say, I receive that. This is the year of what? Change and new beginnings. Your frustrations are about to be transformed. People that have been your problem are going to be shipped somewhere else. What am I talking about? Issues that have been harassing you for the last five years are going to be totally removed from your environment. This year, there's going to be change and what? New beginnings. New people coming into your life this year. Deficits will be changed into assets. New beginnings. 
The good news then is this, that when we look at this, we need to understand change. Now make a note of this, everything will change. Everything will be changing. Number two, change is our greatest challenge because the change in the world is moving so fast, we cannot keep up with it. I, uh, I was watching the news this week and they were talking about the new telephone that just came out by a company. And the phone was out for five months. And then the news reporter says, but the next version of it has already arrived. Which means in five months, your phone you just bought is history. I'll never forget the day I walked in to an appliance electronic store in the United States. I just bought a computer. And I, something went wrong with the, I couldn't find the plug. And I tried to go buy the plug. The computer was 10 months old. The guy said, we don't make them anymore. <laughs> he said, you got to buy a universal plug. I couldn't believe it. But now it's down to five months. That's how fast you're going to have to be able to respond to change. In other words, here's the bottom line. We must decide the change we desire. If I was to give you the word of instructions from the Lord for you this year, it would be this right here. You will have to decide the change that you want. Change is coming in any event. So you're going to have to decide what that change will be in your life. This is why you cannot sit watching the game anymore. Spectators will be destroyed by change. Observers will be obliterated by change. Doing nothing is no longer an option. You're going to have to get involved in your life, in your environment, and what happens in your life. No longer is it going to work this year where you sit down and say, let me see what happens. That's going to destroy you. You're going to have to be responsible for deciding this is what's going to happen in my life. I'm talking to you prophetically. I promise you, if you sit by and just watch life, life will change your life in a way you're going to regret. If you don't do something this year with your life, you're going to regret it next year. I put it to you, and this is my heart. When changes that you want to see happen are planned, you control life. Write this statement down. What changes would produce the quality of life we desire and desire as God's creation? In other words, what changes do you desire in line with what God wants for your life. I have made some simple decisions for my life this year. There's some things I determined must change. And I lined them up with the word of God. And they are in God's line. These things will happen in my life. And I'm going to plan every single iota of them. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't plan, life will plan your life for you this year. I want to recommend three things that I call the promise. This is the promise for 2013 from the Lord for the millions watching this program. And I'm speaking to you in Freeport and Grand Bahama. I'm speaking to you out there in Idaho who wrote me. I'm speaking to you in Canada who said you'd be watching. I'm talking to you there in Iran. Yes, you wrote me. I got your letter. Believe me, friends, there are three things you and I have to understand this year. And I call them the promise of change. Here's number one. Providential change. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and says, I am going to initiate providential change. What is providential change? 
Listen, friends, there are, there are different types of changes. There's natural change, which happens because of time. You grow old, things die. These are natural changes. Then there are changes that are in, as a result of that change. For example, when trees die, they give off gases. The gases change the composition of the gas structure in the community and in the environment. When an animal dies, including a human, they give off a lot of gases. That gases change the composition in our air. When a plant dies, it gives off a whole lot of strange gases that change our lives. That's natural creative change. Then there's change that are imposed upon our environment. Change where you drive your car, you emit carbon dioxide, which depletes the ozone layer, which increases the amount of gamma rays and ultraviolet rays coming from the sun, which heats up the earth, which is causing the changes in our environment and causing things to happen where they ain't supposed to happen, like winter taking place in places, or summer, or heat, or earthquakes, or tsunamis in places where they never were, because we are affecting the environment with change. There's change that's going to happen to you internally. Your heart used to be one year younger. Your arteries used to be one year less clogged up. You can't even see the change in your body. You wonder why someone suddenly falls out? That was taking place long time gradually. You keep eating mustard and mayonnaise and... Hmm, I better stop talking about food. You ate all this potato salad for 10 years and start wearing it on your hip. Change happens all the time on yourself. Your chest used to be under your chin, my brother. Now it's above your thigh. <laughs> Don't look at anybody, just keep looking at me change but here's what the Holy Spirit said to tell you my friend he's gonna perform providential change what is providential change write this down providential change is God will in life initiate change himself God will in your life initiate change which means God is going to interrupt the changes that are changing with his own changes that means heaven will impose itself on earth without your permission this year God says stored up prayers that you prayed years ago are gonna finally come to earth with answers <laughs> things you've been interceding for for years this is the year that the veil is turned over and poured on earth you know I was thinking this morning about Daniel Daniel prayed once and he went to bed but 21 days the angel that had the answer was struggling to get it to earth and 21 days later the angel came and gave the answer to Daniel. 21 days. And the angel says, the first day you prayed, I was dispatched by the Heavenly Father. For 21 days, here I am. I had to fight through some struggles, he says. The evil one was trying to stop the answer. I got good news and I prophesy. Lift your hands and receive this. The prayers you've been praying for 10 years, 5 years, 3 years, God said this year, the angel has arrived on earth. This is going to be divine change in your life. Do you receive that? I receive it. Number four. Providential change means the invisible will invade the visible. Things you cannot see are going to start taking place in your life. 
You're going to find things just happening that you had no credit for. Divine interference. Hallelujah. Anybody ready for that this year? It also means, number five, supernatural will impose on the natural. God says, after you've done all that you can do, back off. Can I say it again? God said this year, do everything you can do and then back off. Why? I'm about to take over where you left off. There's going to be supernatural interference in earth. Change. This is going to be the year of massive testimonies. Of things you cannot explain. Selah. Number two. Divine beginnings, God says. This will be the year of divine beginnings. What do we mean? He says this will be the year of divine beginnings because, number one, God himself will birth new ideas in you. You're going to be sitting in a place, anywhere, and suddenly there's going to be a divine deposit in your mind of an idea that's going to work. He's going to bring... <laughs> He make me smile thinking about it. He's going to bring solutions to problems you've been trying to solve for 50 years in 50 seconds. He's going to bring changes in your capacity to conceive divine ideas. Number two, God says, heaven will give birth to earthly exploits. That means people who are walking in the kingdom of God all over the world, they're going to end up developing products and ideas. They're going to develop businesses and investments and inventions that are going to change the world like Stephen Jobs did. Get ready for God to come into your experience and give you some divine insight to bring complete exploits. This is where many of God's people are going to no longer be employees. You're going to become the employer. Hey boys, exploits. The Bible says, they that know their God shall do great exploits. That means some of you are going to go into global business. You're going to be finding yourself in foreign countries doing business with people you never knew was possible. And God, I'm going to cause you to become so impactful that you're going to be the one to set the tune for the values in that country. I'm beside myself. Number three. He says, the supernatural will start changes in the natural without man's permission. There are some people who think they control things. If you want a job, you got to come through me. God says, I'm going to kill that one tonight. You want a promotion? You'll do it if I say so. God will kill that one tonight. In other words, God's going to interfere in situations that you will not be responsible for. Supernatural starting of new environments. The natural without man's permission will be invaded by the supernatural. I am so excited about God. You know, Daniel, what a man. Daniel says, look, you know, I just work here. <laughs> I'm just a secretary of state, that's all. But don't fool with me. And the king says, you know, I want you to worship my idol. Daniel says, you don't understand. I can't do that. And the king said, do you know how much power I have? You're going to hear that often this year. Do you know how much power I have? Ladies and gentlemen, I am so afraid. I told you I was afraid of this year. This year is going to be so dangerous. Because people are going to drop dead. Supernatural interference. I warned the wicked. You will be like a flower. You're going to be here today and gone tomorrow. If you touch God's anointed things, I'm not talking about people only. I'm talking about businesses and positions and authorities and churches. God is going to wipe out people this year who interfere in his stuff. Tell your neighbor, stay on track. Supernatural interference. Change. He's going to change things by invading them supernaturally. Some of you are going to go to a bank and find money on your account and it's going to be legitimate without explanation some of you are going to wake up in the morning 
and the lump that was there for 20 years gone. Why? God came into bed, interfered with the lump. God's going to change your husband in one night. He can wake up bigger than tongues. He ain't going to go through no salvation stuff. Just he cut up. Because I'm going to supernaturally fix the brother up. Oh, don't tell me God can't do it. Your wife is going to turn into a queen in one night. I know she's a problem to you for a long time. But one morning, she's going to say, hey, I love you. What do you want me to do? Anything. Here's your breakfast. She's going to be transformed by supernatural interference. Anybody ready for God to bring divine change? I'm beside myself. Without permission, God says. That means you even forgot the prayer you prayed. And God's going to answer the prayer you forgot you prayed. Give God a hand for answered prayer. Come on, give him a loud shout in this place. This is the year of supernatural invading the natural. Without man's permission. I got a feeling you're about to be transformed. In your workplace, in your business, in your family, in your relationships. I don't know, there's something on top of me telling me that God's about to change everything. This first month going to be the beginning of change in your life. The third one is transformation. God said this year is going to be transformation. The year of major transformation. Now this is not easy. Because transformation can be very threatening. Because the human spirit loves the familiar. That's why you got a plan. Here's what this means. Number one, it means the spiritual and the natural will have a metamorphosis. Metamorphosis means not adjustments. Total change. Do you get what I'm talking about? Yeah. Transformation doesn't mean you adjust things. It means complete change. The word we use to describe a caterpillar becoming a butterfly is the word metamorphosis. God said this is the year for that. That means some of you are going to have a complete transformation in your life. You got to expect it. Some folks won't even recognize you at the end of the year. Not even physically, you're going to change. Mm-mm. You were weighing 280 by the end of the year. 140. I mean permanently. <laughs> Y'all better receive that fast. I, I received that in the name of Jesus. You received that? Praise the Lord. Hey, boys, a transformation. Yeah. That means your sickness will be transformed, not just into feeling better, but you're going to be completely healed. Matter of fact, it's going to be such a transformation, your blood is going to become a healing agent to other people. I am going to confess that transformation is on the way to your life. Say amen. amen. I want you to go to work every day Expecting not to be there. Oh Lord, have mercy. Hey, where's the transformation? Mm, go to work, do, do your work, but don't expect to be there at the end of the year. Because God's about not just to adjust your position, He's about to change the whole thing. Can I put it this way? In some cases, the people that you work for will end up working for you at the end of this year. Hey, boys, a transformation. You who had not enough this year gonna have too much at the end of the year. This year is gonna be transformation, not adjustment. This is what God's word says. Write this down. He says conditions will change. The conditions in which you work under what you married under, where you go to school under, who you relate to, the conditions that where they treat you, God said, hold on, hold on, I'm going to change everything. You realize that the same Nebuchadnezzar who threw lion, the, the man in the lion's den, was the same Nebuchadnezzar 
Three days later, who said, everybody shall worship the God of Daniel? I prophesy, someone in your workplace is going to be totally transformed. It's going to blow your mind because God is going to interfere with that situation all by himself. There can be a lot of funerals this year. People who think they are God. Now I'm prophesying negative, you know. I'm telling you, God ain't going to adjust them. He's going to remove them. Change is your year. Number three, he says environments will change. Number four, he says the culture of your country will go through a change. This is the year that God is going to transform cultures. That means there will be national revivals in countries. Things that men forgot, they're going to remember. They're going to dig up the old stones they buried. And they're going to bring them back into the center of the marketplace and say, we will serve God again. I believe that God is going to remove ungodly leaders instantly. Not gradually. And he's going to raise up supernaturally righteous women and men who will be in positions of power, who will change the culture of the nation. If you believe that, shout amen and receive it. Every country God is going to interfere in. But you got to plan. You have to plan. Ladies and gentlemen, the last one is providential change. Providential change is in the scripture. I want you to remember the scripture. It's in Isaiah. Isaiah said, God is speaking to him. The voice of God. Read it with me. It says what? See, I am doing a new thing. And then God stops. Exclamation. In other words, think about that for a minute first. I am doing a new thing. Next statement. Now it springs up. Will you not know it? He's saying it's possible for me to do something new and you missed it. Next statement. Do you not perceive it? I'm going to do some things so differently. And people who are not in tune wouldn't even see it. This year, I want you to be very sensitive to change in your life. Change in your environment. And don't be panicky about change. Expect it. Then God says, I am making a way in a place where there ain't supposed to be no way. Oh boy. Some of y'all got that. God says, look, ain't supposed to be no road in no wilderness. <laughs> but you're going to wake up one morning and there's this beautifully paved road where ain't supposed to be nothing. Anybody ready for that kind of life? He says, I'm going to open up a way where there's no way I'm going to change the environment. I'm going to change the conditions instantly in a place where it ain't supposed to happen. This year, every time someone tells you that never happened, smile. You believe that you applied for that job? You believe you can get that? Just smile and say, "Mm mm-hmm. This ain't the year of natural process. He's going to do something right in the middle of nowhere. Bam! Anybody ready for bam? <laughs> There's no road in the wilderness. I've been to many of them. I've been to the Sinai. I've been to, the, to Judea. There's no road over there. God says, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm going to build a highway where there's no construction material. You feel lost? In the morning, there can can be a sign. Go this way. You feel abandoned? In the morning, there can be all kinds of folks showing up and saying, we will help you. You feel like you don't know what you're doing? In the morning, you wake up one morning, all of a sudden, everybody telling you, here's what to do, here's what to do, here's what to do. You get out your problem. 
If you feel like you don't know which way to go, you can suddenly realize, I know a 